Oh, good. <laughs> the final bull from Kearns is TKCC Escalade, 1820E, calved on March the 1st. This pen of bulls averages 310 days of age, ribeye area 1.14 square inches per 100 pounds, 3.67 IMF score, and a 0.29 fat thickness. Their weight per day of age is 3.87, with a frame score of 5.4 and a scrotal circumference of 40. Average Cavanese EPD of 65. The average weaning weight EPD is 77, which is in the top 8% of the breed. Their weaning weight or yearling weight EPD is a 119, the top 4% of the breed. Real growth set of bulls. The maternal Cavanese EPD is 7.6. Maternal weaning weight 54. Stability of 9.3. With a yield grade EPD of minus 0.3. Marbling of 0 0.20, average all-purpose index of 120, average terminal index of 79, top 11% of the breed. Want to let you know that after the pin bull show here today, just immediately here to the west of the Pepsi Arena where we're uh, having our show right now, the uh, sale cattle for the one sale tomorrow afternoon will be on display just right out here to the west, uh, immediately following the pin bull show. Uh, sure ask you to go out and take a look at those cattle. Again, want to thank Val and Lori Eberspacher for... Uh, putting on the sale and for being one of our sponsors in the Power Simmental. Uh, also tomorrow afternoon before the sale, we'll be doing a, uh, a barbecue beef feed uh, here just inside the building, probably behind the bleachers over here. And those, that meal is sponsored by Hannon's Genetic Development Center. Is, I saw Neil earlier today, is Neil here? Neil, thank Neil for your food tomorrow. Also Jamie Secondino, Jamie. Where's Jamie at? I haven't seen her this morning, but she's also with, uh, with Livestock Insurance. Uh, she and Neil are our sponsors for the meal tomorrow afternoon. So be sure and thank them when you see them. We're now working on the pin from Kaler Cattle Company in St. Charles, Minnesota. This first bull in the ring is RFG Kaler Elevation 727E. Sired by LRS Elevate 213B, calved on February the 12th. Located in St. Charles, Minnesota, they run 100 to 125 registered Simmental and Angus cows. They have an annual online female sale in October. Kaler's is a family-owned operation where they utilize AI and embryo, embryo transfer heavily. They strive to produce high-quality cattle to meet every type of customer's needs. Second bull from Kaler's is, K is uh, Kaler Top Gun 737E, sired by Yardley, Utah, Y361, calved on February the 18th. The lead bull uh, that just went into the, uh, got tied up over here a while ago, is in their purebred pen is, is uh, lot 29 in the sale tomorrow afternoon in the one sale. So again, that bull that uh, just got haltered will be in the sale tomorrow afternoon. They sell all bulls private treaty and they sell bred heifers throughout the year. And they're located in pin 2113. Final bull from Kaler's is Kaler Black and Gold 765E. Sired by WLE Black and Gold Y 3055, calf March the 7th. These bulls average 324 days of age with a 1.44 ribeye area, 397 
intramuscular marbling score, and a 2.24 back fat thickness. Their average weight per day of age is 3.34 with a 5.2 frame score and a 38.3 scrotal. Cavanese EPD averages 11.9 with a 59 weaning weight and an 85 yearling weight. Maternal Cavanese of 7.9. Average maternal weaning weight EPD of 46 with a 10.5 on stability. Average yield grade EPD is at minus 0.33 with a 0.23 marbling. Average all-purpose index of 129 and terminal index of 70. Coming into the ring now, we have the entry from Vogler Cattle Company of Ashland, Nebraska. First bull in the ring is VCL Kingsman, sired by TJ High Caliber 556B, calved on February the 1st. Vogler Cattle Company is owned by Les and Lauren Vogler, located in Ashland. have about 180 head of registered Simmental cows, with a bull sale held online the first Tuesday in February, which is February the 6th this year. They run 180 head of registered and commercial Simmental cows. They have an annual female sale the first Saturday after Thanksgiving called The Event. The family also runs Vogler Semen Sendler and process semen on bulls and are able to ship anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Thanks for coming. This is VCL Empire 747E. This bull was also sired by Caliber, High Caliber. Born on March the 1st. For any hill exhibitors that might be in the audience today, the check-in for hill cattle, hill show cattle today starts at 1. This will be a mobile check-in this year. The check-in crew will actually come to your stalls and check in your cattle. So if you could be hanging around your stalls starting about 1 o'clock, we'll get your cattle checked in with no fuss, no muss. Final bull from Vogler's is VCL Statesman 737E, sired by MRCCF Vision, calved on January, er, February the 20th. Pin averages, 329 days of age. Ribeye area, 1.22 square inches per 100 pounds of body weight. A 3.2 IMF score and a .20 back fat thickness. They got a weight per day of age of 3.91 with a 5.5 frame score and a 39.7 scrotal. Average calving ease EPD of 8.1. Average weaning weight EPD of 68 with a 99 yearling weight. Maternal calving ease was 7.6 with a 55 maternal weaning weight, 7.4 stability. Cattle source are the consigners to the, one, to the Wild Wild West sale Tuesday evening. They invite everybody to come out and visit them. Other Simmental events here this week. Uh, later this evening at 6.30 is the chairman's reception. That'll be at the Doubletree up on Quebec, our headquarters hotel. That'll be followed at around 7.45 by the foundation auction. Certainly invite everybody to come out, help support the, uh, the ASA Foundation this evening at the auction. Again, those events start at 6.30 at the Doubletree. Tomorrow, we'll have our uh, Penn Heifer Show. 
That starts. That will start at nine in the morning. Uh, most of the paperwork says eight. We're going to start that at nine tomorrow morning for the Penn Female Show. That'll be followed uh, by the uh, our pre-sale meal here about twelve thirty or one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and then the one sale at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. On Tuesday, starting at eight o'clock, is the Junior Heifer Show, followed by the Bull. Show. Another really good set of uh, purebred bulls here. I guess uh, the uh, as we analyze this set of set of bulls, uh, we had to go with them one, three, and two. Uh, the top uh, entry in the class today. We just thought that set of bulls was most consistent when you analyze them. They had the most top. They had the most muscle. They had the most base width in them. Um, and yet, when you put that in combination with the set of indexes they have, they rank extremely high, especially when you look at the terminal index. Um, they ranked right up there as the second in class for API. Um, most consistently, I thought uh, Steve and I analyzed this class from top to bottom, probably the most consistent set of bulls. But that lot th three set of bulls, we sure appreciated that set of bulls. They actually uh, had their little bolder sprung set of bulls. Uh, they're very competitive from a weight per day of age. Um, we we really like this set of uh, bulls in the number three rank or the, the number th three set of bulls. But when you analyzed them, everything was we we really liked. But when there was uh, one bull that uh, came in that uh, was not quite correct enough when you analyzed him off his front end, he was kind of bowled into that shoulder. He didn't move quite correctly. If you looked at him from the t two thirds uh, midsection back, you really appreciated him on a depth and and mass of, of that bull, but uh, we just couldn't rank them over the top set of bulls in the class today just because of the, the soundness issue of the, the one impressive bull in the class other than the, the, uh, how he moved out. When he got into the number or two entry, um, here's the set of bulls. Uh, you sure like the soundness of this set of bulls. Uh, they got out and they moved extremely well. Um, probably carrying a little less condition than the top two entries in the class today. Um, from an EPD standpoint, you know, they ranked right in there. Uh, they just gave up some weight per day of age. They gave up some, when you analyzed them, when they stood down, they didn't, didn't quite, uh, they weren't quite as wide base type of cattle. Uh, but three really good entries in the class today, three close entries. Congratulations. Thank you, Chad. First place in our first uh, first class of purebred pin of three goes to Carnes Cattle Company, Rushville, Nebraska. Second to Vogler Cattle Company, Ashland, Nebraska. And third to Kaler Cattle Company, St. Charles, Minnesota. I'm sorry. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Third to Kaler's. Subclass B of Class 222. Our first pin in the ring will come from Ruby Cattle Company from Murray, Iowa. First bull in the ring is Ruby CF Battle Cry 761E, sired by Ruby SWC Battle Cry 431B. 
calved on February the 3rd. Ruby Cattle Company is owned by Nate Leslie and Creed Ruby. Ranch manager is Nate, assisted by herdsman Jared Gillespie. They're located in Murray, Iowa, run about 350 head of cows with 250 Simmental and Sim Angus and about 100 registered Angus. Their bull sale is February the 3rd in Lamoni, Iowa, with a female sale is Living the Dream, which is held on Black Friday each fall at the ranch. Ruby Cattle Company is located in the Rolling Hills in southern Iowa, where they utilize embryo transfer and extensive AI in their operation. They strive to produce embryo trans they, they strive to raise sound functional performance and eye appealing cattle for their valued customers. They welcome visitors at the ranch where the factory starts and also welcome visitors to their pen tw number 2239 out here in the yards anytime. They've now exhibited at the yards for 10 years and have been very successful here at the yards. They, uh, as you may recall, they had a power Simmental entry in the pen of five. Second bull from Ruby's is Ruby SWC SIG E766, sired by WBF Significant B132, calved on March the 5th. Final bull from Ruby's, Ruby's Significant, 771E, sired, also sired by Significant, calved on January 31st. Data averages on this pin, 334 days of age, with a 1.3 ribeye area, square inches of ribeye area per 100 pounds, 3.53 IMF score with a 0.22 back thickness. Average weight per day of age is 3.54, frame score 5.3, Scroll of 36.5. Average calving ease EPD of 9.4. With a 79 weaning weight EPD, which ranks in the top 13% of the breed. And a high yearling weight EPD, top 14% of the breed at 123. Their maternal calving ease EPD averages 7.8. With a 58 on maternal weaning weight, 12.1 on stability. A minus 0.3 yield grade, 0.24 marbling. A 138 API and an 82 terminal index, both of which also rank quite high in the breed. Eastern and also private treaty. They're a family owned and operated farming operation of about 800 acres, including pasture, hay, and row crops. Their kids have all been active junior members. Gina has coordinated two of the largest junior nationals in, junior, in AJSA history and is a junior advisor for the Iowa Junior Board. The Longs pride themselves on utilizing their own genetics. They use AI, ET, and, and in vitro fertilization, but believe in making the cows work in real world applications. They've been fortunate to win They've been fortunate to win numerous championships over the years, including the National Western Pen Show. People's Choice Power Bull and, ki and their kids have won numerous titles in Iowa at Junior Nationals and Regionals and Jackpots. The second bull from Long's is Long's Payday, calved on February the 1st. The Long's have also been fortunate to raise multiple AI sires serving the industry with One-Eyed Jack currently ranking in the top 10 bulls for registrations. They're proud of their kids and proud to be private cattle bred and raised on their farm. They were also last year's donor of the AJSA Foundation heifer in the one sale. Be sure and thank the Longs for their great service to the breed over the years. Final bull from Longs is Longs Pay the Man. 
calved on February the 11th. Data averages on this pin. Point three one fat thickness, average weight per day of age of three point five three, with a frame score of five point two and a scrotal circumference of thirty seven point two. Average calving ECPD of six point two, with a seventy three on weaning weight and a one hundred six on yearling weight, both ranking in the top third of the breed. Maternal calving ECPD of four point one, maternal weaning weight of fifty one, stability of ten point seven. The average yield grade on this pen is a minus 0.22 with a 0.31 marbling, 126 on all-purpose index, and 75 on terminal index. Minnesota. Lead off bull for Hilburns is HILB SHER data breach, sired by HILB Oracle C033R, calved on February the 2nd. Hilburns Cattle Company is owned by Mark and Amanda Hilburns at Clara City, Minnesota. They run about 150 head of purebred and Sim Angus cows. Their sale dates uh, the first Saturday in November is the Jewels of the Northland, and their passion for perfection sale is March the 30th. The Hilburns make a This would be HILB, sign me up, E338. Sired by Executive Order, WC Executive Order 8543B, have on February the 1st. Final bull on this pen from Hilburns is HILB Royal Rumble E102W. He's also sired by executive order, also cab on February the 1st. This pen averages 345 days of age with a ribeye area 1.23 square inches per 100 pounds.
two on stayability. Yield grade EPD averages minus 0.3 with a 0.23 marbling score, 138 on all purpose index, and 77 on terminal index, both of which are in the top 20% of the breed. sale in West Point, Nebraska on March the 8th. Second bill from Steam Hooks is JS Redemption 2E, tired by WS Revival, calved on January the 25th. Besides those sales, Steam Hooks also have a few select bills for sale private trading at the farm. Please feel quite free to stop by their pen in the yard. See their cattle and visit. JS will also have cattle on the hill. Stop by and see. Fifty four maternal weaning weight. 12.7 on stayability in the top third of the breed, a minus 0.3 yield grade, 0.2 marbling, 129 all-purpose index, and 73 terminal index, again, top third of the breed. As our judges uh, make their final evaluations on this class, I'd like to invite Lori Eberspacher and Tim Smith to come into the ring, visit with you about tonight's chairman's reception and the foundation auction. Hello, everyone. On behalf of the American Semitol Foundation, we would like to invite you to our gala tonight. We have a really fun evening set up for everyone where we award the Golden Book Awards, and we have an awesome speaker. We have Kevin Oshner tonight, which is the host of Cattleman, Cattleman RFD TV. We also have our auction that we raise money for the foundation for all the different projects we have. So come as you are. It starts at 630, and we'd be honored to have you there. Thank you. Chad is associate of Steve Monin from Monin Angus at White Lake, South Dakota. Steve's wife, Kathy, and their four kids, Josh and John, who are helping the operation, as well as Jared and Jennifer, have been uh, operating Monin Angus since 1986. They have about 400 purebred Angus cows and another 400 commercials. Uh, they make heavy use of embryo transfer. Their bull sale is February the 8th at the ranch. They'll sell about 150 bulls, including 20 Sim Angus bulls. And also want to thank Steve for coming out and helping evaluate the bulls today. They will be the same judges here tomorrow for the uh, Pin Heifer Show.
another really uh, sound set of uh, bulls from top to bottom, impressive set of in this class today based upon e per, EP percentile rankings because they all ranked up there and they're very well balanced. Uh, then we went with the uh, lot two entry. Um, this set of bulls, uh, another, when you analyze them, um, not on the move, uh, very extremely. Subclass C this morning has just two entries, a little older bulls. First set comes from Springer Simmental at Cresco, Iowa. Lead bull is SAS Bitten E532. These bulls, like their pin of five, were all sired by Eric. Final bull in this pen from Springers is SAS Bitten 923E, capped on January the 23rd. This pen of bulls averages 359 days of age, have a 1.29 square inches of ribeye per 100 pounds of body weight by ultrasound, with a 3.55 inch muscular marbling uh, ultrasound and a 0.23 fat thickness. Average weight per day of age was 3.25. Swanson Cattle Company at Peterson Island. First bull in the class is Swanson. Once again, if you don't have got your prior Simmental ticket, this will be your last chance to get one here in the next few minutes to, uh, in order to evaluate the purebred Simmental bulls. This third bull from Swanson's is Middleman 127E, calved on January the 15th. Pin averages 361 days of age, 1.26 on ribeye area, 3.52 marbling. Uh, ultrasound marbling with a 0.21 fat thickness, average weight per day of age of 3.54, a frame score of 6, average scrotal circumference of 39.2. Under APDs, average calving ease of 3.1, average weaning weight of 79 and yearling weight of 125, ranked in the top 2 and 4% of the breed. 5.3 on maternal calving ease with a 55 on maternal weaning weight. 8.3 on stability, a minus 0.28 on yield grade, a minus 0.02 marbling, average all-purpose index of 104, and terminal index of 71. Prado, Vice President is Jay Hill from Sterling. The other directors are Vicki Allberg, Willie Altenberg, Duke Duzik, Mitchell Jurgensen, Russell Prince. Uh, these guys put in lots of time to help us get this show every year going to National Western. Uh, couldn't do any of it without our long-term secretary treasurer and my pride of 37 years, Susan Russell. So thank you all, everybody. Also want to make sure and thank again Ron Murray. Ron's been uh, organizing our pin show here in the yards of Denver for we decided this morning, uh, and uh, he started training uh, our director, Mitchell Jurgensen, to take 
you, Ron. Please give him a big thank you. and also 
the structure of time is and the longevity that we'll have in them. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. First place goes to Springer Simmental, Cresco, Iowa. Second place is Swanson Cattle Company, Peterson, Iowa. We have one more. Their lead bull is HCC Zone 6676D, sired by MRJJ H Skill Environment with emphasis on growth, structure, and saleability. Cattle are bred with their customers in mind. I was just informed we will have all the purebred bulls in immediately after selection of champion in reserve. Won't have to wait for pictures. We'll have all the power simmental purebred bulls in the ring immediately after the selection of the grand reserve. In a three. Final bull from Kaler's is HCC Cowboy Cat 6683D. He was also sired by Cowboy Cat. Calved on September 22nd. Ribeye area 1.13 square inches per body weight, 3.29 IMF and a 0.26 fat thickness. There are some corrections in this, uh, on this pin. Um, we have a couple of blanks on the second bowl in the ring. His weight per day of age is 3.05. His frame score was 6.2. That changes the averages of the pin weight per day of age to 3.14 and the pin frame score to 5.9. Their average scrotal circumference was 42. EPDs, average cavities EPD of 8.4, with a 74 weaning weight and a 107 yearling weight, both ranking in the top 20% of the breed. They have a 7.5 maternal cavities EPD, with a 65 maternal weaning weight, and an 8 on stability. The yield grade EPD averages minus 0.2, with a marbling EPD of 0.29, Average API of 122 and TI of 77. We do need all our first and second place purebred pin of three bulls standing by for selection of champion and reserve. Excellent set of uh, fall bulls. Uh, i got to applaud uh, this exhibitor for bringing a set of bulls that are fall born. They're always a little more aggressive, a little tougher to get here and, and exhibit. I wish we could have more fall bulls. Carnes Cattle Company, Rushville, Nebraska. Out of the subclass A, first class of first class of uh, pin of threes came into the ring.
Okay. Yep. We mentioned that when we when it came through. We get this set of uh, division or class winners out here. We we really uh, were quite happy with the set of bulls that uh, that we got out here to, to pick this division or pick the champion here. Um, when we analyze them from top to bottom. Uh, this uh, first set of bulls, we sure appreciate the amount of muscle in these cattle when you analyze them over their top line when you play their base with uh, just an extremely impressive set of bulls from a muscularity standpoint when you analyze their weight per day of age. You really have to appreciate that also. And when, we, when we're analyzing these bulls today, we're pretending we're commercial cow-calf producers that are going to a bull sale. I think, I think that's why you come here with a pen of bulls and, uh, and display them so you get some consistency in them, just like a, a commercial producer would be going to a bull sale and, and trying to, to pick a consistent set of bulls. And uh, I think all these three goals as we get them into this championship line here are, are very impressive for consistency. You know, the second set of bulls, the second class winner here, um, we sure appreciate this set of bulls uh, for their freshness, their deep rib type of bulls. When you analyze them from the rear, you can see that explosive amount of rib to them. Uh, they're big barrel bulls. Uh, when you look at them from a percentile ranking, from a meat EPD standpoint, two of those bulls are extremely impressive. In fact, two of those bulls in that uh, set of bulls there. Uh the big outline type of bulls, the percentile rankings, eight bulls that, uh, that uh, are structurally sound, will get out and, and carry on some good attributes to the commercial cow calf industry. When we get into the fall set of bulls there, that class winner there that didn't, didn't have any competition in class, you sure have to appreciate the amount of soundness these bulls have. They're big, long spine bulls. Uh, they're bulls that will get out and cover a lot of country, and I think as commercial producers, uh, a lot of guys would appreciate this set of bulls because they're going to be bulls that will withstand time and, and be there and produce at the top end of the production of the calf crop each year. So with that, uh, kind of give you a breakdown of how we saw these class winter, winners. Uh, hopefully you uh, see them similar to, to what we, we did analyze them as. And I know everybody has different environments, different needs, and different reasons why you pick bulls from a terminal standpoint or a maternal standpoint. But what Steve and I wanted to do most is pick bulls that had uh, some structural correctness. They're stout set of bulls that commercial cattlemen would, would like to have, and they're the cattle that will stand up the test of time. So we, we were a little bit picky as we went and analyzed them from a structural soundness standpoint. Because really, um, if we didn't analyze these bulls, you know, typically we could have just analyzed them on paper and there's no need for a show. So we, we definitely thought there needed to be some phenotype and some structural soundness to rank these bulls at the top of these classes today, just like a commercial cow-calf producer would do. So with that, we'll go out and select our champion uh, out of this uh, set of bulls, and, uh, and uh, then we'll select our reserve champion.
Bowles, 2018 National Western Stock Show, Carnes Cattle Company, Rushville, Nebraska. Congratulations. We need the pin from Vogler Cattle Company in the ring, please, for selection of reserve champion. Vogler Cattle Company, Ashland, Nebraska. Evaluation by our those who have purchased chances. Please, if you haven't done that, if you'd still like to, just come down here to the uh, table at the end of the bleachers. Susan or any of the other folks there will be happy to help you. It's not noon yet. Okay, we're ready for the first selection, People's Choice. We have three. 
three purebred bulls. And they're all dice faced. So come on down with your power scimitol selection. Bring your first card. Make sure you mark the first card that says bulls purebred. And place these bulls. It's a lot. Power bull, power scimitol one. Okay, one, three, and nine. One, three, and nine. And you have to mark all three of them. You can't just place one bull. Barry Wesner, is it? Okay, you guys all know how to do this. Mark your cards. Place your bulls. Come on down in the sand. the fun stuff. And if you just watch and still want to buy a card for the next percentage class, you can do that or buy a card for that for tomorrow. But come buy a card. Place these bulls. We'll do this again. After the percentage, but you need to mark all three bulls. Bull number one, bull number three, bull number nine. We'll have six of these. When you're finished, you can bring it up to the announcer stand.
turn your cards in up here at the announcer stand on your way out. A couple more minutes. Okay, one more minute. One more minute. Why don't you bring some cards up here to the front? Let's give these uh, Powerball exhibitors a nice round of applause. as they leave the ring. You bet. They brought us some nice bulls.
Getting started now with our percentage pin of three bulls. Again, Simmental percentage pin of bulls. Our first class in the run ring comes from CK Bar Ranch, Kadoka, South Dakota. This bull is KECH MRTR 746, sired by LRS 10X Excellence 352C, calved on March the 16th. <laughs> no, I'm not in charge, but I, I just take direction. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Second bull in the ring from CK Bar is KECH MR Rushmore 731, also sired by 10X Excellence. He was calved on March the 21st. CK Bar Ranch is located at Kadoka, South Dakota. Uh, Kelly and Amy Erickson would like to invite everyone to their 17th annual bull sale April the 6th at St. Ons Livestock in the Black Hills of South Dakota. They'll be offering 35 Sim and Sim Angus bulls along with 35 Angus bulls from Camera Livestock. Their program consists of 100 registered cows. They're real working mama cows that are managed the same as the commercial cow herd, which has enabled them to have an asset of cows that are self-maintaining in a variety of environments with the cows passing those traits through the bulls and adding value to their customer cattle. Final bull from Erickson to this class is KECH Mr. Vegas 775, started by Wheatland Bull 437B, calved on April the 16th. Pen averages 290 days of age. 1.36 square inches of ribeye per 100 pounds of body weight. An average IMF ultrasound score of 3.03 .03 and a fat thickness of 0.19. Weight per day of age averages 3.44 with a 5.2 frame score and a 35.8 scrotal circumference. Average cabin ease EPD of 11.4, weighting weight of 63, and average yearling weight EPD of 101. The maternal calving easy PDs average 10 with a 53 maternal weaning weight, 14 on stability, a negative 0.25 yield grade, a point two, positive 0.25 on marbling, 128 average API, and an average of 68 TI. Here in our pen, we have Hillbrands Cattle Company from Clara City, Minnesota. Bill number E902, Hilb, Prime Executive by WC Executive Order. Our second sire in the ring is E718, Hilb Jazz, Play to Play, or Pay to Play, sired by Pays to believe. And our third sire in the ring is Hill Prince Charming.
again sired by executive order. When we look at the pin, the averages for these traits are the red by area is 1.25. We have a very special bull called Data Breach, and there are limited shares available for sale. Bill Brands Cattle Company. Duxbury Family Summitals. First bull in the ring is lot 79E. DUXS Embrace, sired by Cowboy Cut. Birth date of March 20th. Next side of the ring is DUXS Epoxy by Yardley. sale in September and bulls and females in the pri private treaty sale in February. This year's bull sale is Wednesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, and they will be priced privately here at Denver. The final bull for the Neil Duxbury family Simmentals is DUXS Exalt, sired by when we consider the pin, their averages are ultrasound data are 1.25 ribeye, barb length is 3.98, almost 4%. Fat is 0.26. Weight per day of age is 4.01. Frame score on average is 5.9, almost 6. And scroll is 40 centimeters.
percentage goals really a nice uh, class of goals. We, I think we've got three different types of goals in this class that we had to analyze here. Uh, three different, probably three different types, three different uh, goals if you were producers to, and you could probably pick them three different ways. But uh, we chose to pick them three, two, and one. Um, the, the number three uh, entry down there, we thought the biggest performance oriented type of goals. They got some muscle, they got some performance. You look at the rate per day of age, they ranked right at the top of the, of the class. Um, they're, they're bulls that have a little more structural um, frame to them, but uh, definitely as performance-oriented cattle, they, they would win the class. Then in the, the lot two entry, this is what I'd call the cow maker type of bulls in the class. You sure like to analyze that midsection, the amount of rib and depth they've got. They'll produce a set of females that'll be structurally sound because you analyze these bulls out on the move. Depth of rib, the amount of depth of flank these bulls have. You know, you could uh, just vision the type of ability that their daughters will have. And I think if you're, if you're out to pick a set of bulls that will make, make some commercial oriented females that will have some longevity and some structural soundness and some production orientation, this set of bulls will do very well. Uh, giving up nothing to this uh, lot to uh, one entry. We sure appreciated these bulls and that. Uh, you know, you analyze them. Look at them from a foot standpoint, the best set of bulls in the class. Um, but they just gave up a little bit of power to the other two uh, pens of bulls in the class today. But uh, nothing to knock these bulls at all. We, they're very competitive in this competitive class, and we sure really like the foot structure under these bulls and the amount of performance that they do have and offer. Again, an excellent set of bulls. In class. 322, subclass A. First place, Steel Duxbury, famous and talls of South Dakota. Second place, Hill Brands, Cattle Company of Clare City, Minnesota. Third place, CK Bar Ranch of South Dakota. Next in class is 322B. Third bull in the ring for RS and T Simtals is E721 RS and T Sharpshooter, sired by WC Sniper. When we analyze the pin for the averages, ribeye area is 0.39, marbling of 3.4, fat of 0.21, weight per day of age of 3.43, frame score average is just below 5 at 4.8. And 
exposed circumference at 36.8 centimeters. Next class in 322B is Kearns Cattle Company of Rushville, Nebraska. First bull in the ring is 280E. E KCC1 Execute. Again, sired by KTCC Carver. Third bull in the ring for Kearns Cattle Company is 401 or 4001E KCC Elvis. Again, the third bull is hired by TKCC Carver. A March 1st birthday. Final pin for class 322, subclass B, is Schooly Cattle Company of Bloomfield, Iowa. First iron in the ring is 5 point, or excuse me, 543E, Schooly Emmett, sired by Pays to Believe. A birth date of February 18th. Second bull in the ring is X13E Schooly Elias, sired again by Pace to Believe, with a birth date of March 4th.
Indiana raises registered semitol and Angus, and then also some Angus cattle focusing on cattle that are sound and perform well on a forage based diet. They will be hosting their first annual production sale at the ranch in Indiana this February on the 25th. They'd like to invite everybody here to show up to Indiana to see what they have to offer. Our second class of RS and T semitols, a short summary of the operation is that rs and Simmentals started as a junior project in 1982 for Scott and his sister Tiffany participating in AJSA Classics. The operation has continued to grow with Scott and John Calgar working closely to continue to advance genetics and enhance quality Simmental cattle with the help of their herd manager, Bill. Jordan Calgar is the current AJSA trustee serving as president and has participated in every classic since she was nine. RSD will offer bulls for private treaty on March the 17th. They will be offering about 30 bulls with some strong age bulls such as the percentage pan this year along with several yearling bulls and a large number of bulls going to repeat buyers and have enjoyed success with RSD genetics. On April the 7th, RSD will consign pairs
told me that he is the whipping boy on the Cemetery Association, so we'll blame Luke for most anything that goes wrong today. Um, another really, really consistent set of uh, a class here. Um, from top to bottom, the consistency, probably the most consistent class we've analyzed all day. We analyzed this class, we had to pick up in the three, four, two, and one. Um, the first entry, or the number three entry in the class today, we just felt uh, when you combine the overall performance in the set of goals, they're big performance oriented goals, the analyze them from the behind, from the back, uh, they got a plenty amount of width, and you combine that with their percentile rankings, especially on API, they they overpowered everything in the class today. Then you go into the entry number four, uh, really attractive mate type of goals. Um, close, the second to the highest API goals in the class today. These bald league goals, you sure appreciate their soundness, uh, their phenotype, their length of front end, um, um, just attractive type of goals that will go out and make some nice females. You go into the number two, or entry two set of goals. These are the most moderate frame goals in the class. Maybe not quite as much consistency in the set of goals. Make sure you have to appreciate the amount of uh, length of front end, kind of similar to the to the lot four entry goals in the class. They did give up some weight per day of age. Uh, just I think more than anything, they're more moderate in frame score. The uh, lot uh, or entry one goals definitely you know still competitive goals. We appreciated these goals. Um, Probably not quite as much base width under this set of goals, but they're sound. And uh, they just gave up some base width and overall performance to be uh, placed higher today. But uh, four really excellent set pens of goals, and uh, they could be placed in a couple different ways, but this is the way we felt that most, cons most consistently went along with how we've been placing them today. Thank you. Thank you, Chad Ellingson. To continue to discuss this group of bulls, uh, Kearns Cattle Company raised about 350 uh, and registered cattle. Cattle farms is located in northwest Nebraska. They concentrate on selling and raising percentile cemetery cattle. Most of their bull customers request half ones. The late after bull sales to sell 60 bulls on February 15th at the West Point Livestock Center in West Point, Nebraska. They try to purchase the calf crop from their bull customers to generate more dollars for those folks. Bell Farms also host a bred female sale this is the first Saturday after Thanksgiving. 100 females are sold. A few choice open females are also marketed. Bell Farms strives in raising cattle that have eye appeal and can thrive on grass and sandy pastures. Their bulls must be able to generate profit for their customers' herds. Second bull in the ring for Felt Farms is Felt Edison, sired by Halftime. Third bull in the ring is 416E Felt Evan, again sired by Harker's Giant Ringo. When we analyze this pen, the ribeye area is 1. Point, excuse me, 1.29, marbling of 3.72 with fat of 0.27. Weight per day of age is 3.62, with a frame score on average just over 6 at 6.2, with a scrubble circumference of 38.3. Fell Farms from Wakefield, Nebraska. Our next bull is E2, five star exclusive, sired by CCR Santa Fe. Birth date of February 7th. The 
And third bowl in the entry is Five Star Empower E6, sired by WS All Around. Star Ranch, St. Charles, Minnesota, owned by Scott, Jerry, Jared, and Hannah Sangola. Five Star Ranch runs 40 cow calf pairs, registered Simmental and Semangus, and sell bulls at regional, state, and national sales along with private treaty. Five Star uses AI and embryo transfer to maximize the genetic potential of their herd. Um, and breeding honest, genetically and phenotypically sound cattle is their motto. Their leadoff bull sells as lot 30 in the ones. They also have a production female sale in November and a club calf sale in October. They invite you to stop by and visit or contact them about their upcoming sales. Second entry from Gateway Genetics is E017 Gateway, sired by HILB Maverick A43, born on February 1st. invite everyone to remember about the Foundation Gala tonight at the Doubletree Hotel. Look forward to seeing you all there. Uh, keep in mind those juniors out in the audience, we will be having a giveaway from Sullivan Show Supply. And so if you come to the Foundation Gala, just check right in with Holly Hatmaker when you get there. You have to be present to win. Um, and we're giving away a fan and a box of products, so hope to see you there. Third entry is Gateway Roadblock E226, sired by Gonsol Road Grader, born on February 15th. Uh, this set of bulls has an average 1.27 ribeye area, 3.92 IMF, and 0.23 fat thickness, along with a 3.69 weight per day of age, frame score average of 6. And it's gross circumference of 38.3.
inspired by TL Bottom Line, born February 23rd. SFI approval, 758E, also signed by bottom line, born February 10th. A pen average ribeye area is 1.39, 3.72 IMF, 0.2 fat thickness, 3.63 weight per day of age, frame score 5.1.
top entries in the class today, and we also got those goals out on the move. One of those goals got to break down a little bit into his lower pastor and then wasn't quite as fluid and, and broke under himself. So for that reason, it, uh, even though they were extremely stout set of goals, we had to leave them number three in the class today. Then we get into the number uh, entry number three bulls. Really, the bulls when you analyze. but you sure have to appreciate them, especially if you want some bigger frame to grow your feeder calves. Place. First place entry, Gateway Genetics, Pierce, Nebraska, followed by Rust Mountain Ranch, Mercer, North Dakota.
Next up, we have class 322, subclass D. First set will come from J&C Cinetals in Arlington, Nebraska. Arlington, Nebraska. First is J&C Innocent Man, E712. Sired by WCBF Innocent Man, born on January 26th. Jane C. Simmentals is a family-owned and operated Simmental cattle business in Arlington, Nebraska. They've been exhibiting at the National Western Stock Show for many years. JNC focuses on selecting and breeding for high-performance bulls for the commercial cattlemen. While the focus is on high-performing bulls, their females do not fall short while out on pasture. JNC females are bred to raise calves that will add pounds and outperform others in the feedlot or raise the next great sire. Second in the entry is JNC Lockdown E27 down 206Z. Birthday, January 30. This year, JNC is hosting their 23rd annual bull sale on January 27th in West Point, Nebraska at West Point Livestock. Bob and Jeanette, sons Jay, wife Kim and daughter Kylie, and Clark, wife Leslie, daughters Claire, Madeline, and Grace, welcome you to the farm anytime. Adam Stutzman is the herdsman and right hand man. Third entry from JNC Simmentals is JNC Pays to Be 8. E724, sired by LLSF Pays to Believe. Birth date, February 16th. On the average, the pen averages 1.31 for ribeye area, 3.37 for intermuscular fat, and 0.29 for fat thickness, with a 3.32 weight per day of age, 5.3 frame score, and 38.2 scroll circumference. Next in subclass D is Kaler Cal Company, St. Charles, Minnesota. First is 705E Kaler Overdrive, sired by Upgrade. Followed by 709E Elder Glass Entry is 707E Explosion, sired by Upgrade. Pen averages 1.19 for river area, 3.12 for IMF, and 0.14 for fat thickness. Accompanied by a 3.51 weight per day of age, 5.5 frame score, and 41.8 scroll circumference. KCC King Louis 49E, also sired by TKCC Cannon, January 26th birthday. Kirsten Cattle, located in Grant, Nebraska, operates approximately 150 registered Simmental. They participate in online sales in October and are a consigner in the event sale of Elite Simmental Genetics the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Kirsten Cattle Company is a family operation of Larry and Judy. Kevin and Stacy, plus daughters Stephanie and Corey, working hard to raise high quality cattle for the promotion of the Simmental breed. Third bull in the pen is LKCC King Henry 568E. They strive to raise sound, functional, performance, and IP cattle for their valued customers. They 
welcome visitors at the ranch where the factory starts and also welcome visitors to pin 2239 anytime. Ruby Cattle Company has exhibited the yards here for over 10 years. Third, we have Ruby NFF PTD 780E 